for traffic when exiting. And welcome to East Chinatown. And that's a 505 Dundas streetcar I was just on. And this here is Broadview Avenue. And hello there, it is Sunday, February 25th. The time is 2.33 p.m. and the temperature is a rather nice four degrees Celsius. I just made my way down here from Broadview Station. Oh, look at that, massage. $10 for 15 minutes. And fortunately, they have restored streetcar service up to Broadview, so you could take either the 504 King or 505 Dundas that way now. It's been quite some time since you've been able to access the streetcar from that stop. And for this one, I'll be making a left at Girard and heading over into downtown. And then I'm going to make my way over to Dundas Square. I'll pass through a few different neighborhoods along the way. And I'll try to take a side street or laneway or two that I haven't yet covered on this channel. But for the most part, we'll be sticking to the main roads. Here is Gerard Street East. And East Chinatown is mostly centered around Gerard Street just to the east of here for several blocks. But we are going west. I always like the artwork on the side of this building. I'm assuming that it's not graffiti and is there by design.
East Chinatown dates back to the 1970s. It's actually the second and smaller Chinatown in the city of Toronto proper. The main one being over at Dundas and Spadina. And this is a Toronto archway that opened up on September, opened up, it's not a store, but <laughs> I guess was completed on September 12th, 2009. And there's really nothing like it in the much larger and better known Chinatown. It's really a nice way to greet you into the neighborhood. And there is Hubbard Park, which takes its name after the first black mayor of Toronto, who was also the first elected black member of city council, if I'm not mistaken. And behind it is the old Don Jail, which is now part of Bridgepoint Health. That's where Riverdale Hospital used to be. And just up ahead is the Don River. And once we cross that, we'll be in downtown. Blackburn Street. It's a pretty nice day for a walk, I would say. Buildings are sort of centered around Young and Bloor. There's the Don Valley Parkway, affectionately known as the Don Valley Parking Lot. As traffic can be pretty brutal at rush hour. Don River. And Riverdale Park West. And the Cabbage Town neighborhood are just over there. To the north of here. And I think what I'll do is I'll go left at River Street. And we'll cut through part of Regent Park. to do a live stream today but I'll be going away soon I'm trying to load up on videos there's a 506 Carlton Street car that one will be going all the way to main station although the primary purpose of this trip at least is not to make content I'll probably do a few videos and live streams from there So if you are not subscribed to the channel and you're curious to see how that pans out, 
well, you know what to do and hit the bell to be notified when I go live. Over 70% of the people who view these videos are not subscribers. It's rotting through, it looks like. So on the north side of Gerard here, which is to the right, is Cabbage Town. Which features North America's largest continuous collection of Victorian style homes. Cabbage Town used to extend to the south side here, but that was replaced by a large housing project called Regent Park. And these buildings here are the last stragglers of the redevelopment of Regent Park. There's currently a very large three-phase development or redevelopment of Regent Park. I think it's four phases actually. They're just finishing phase three, and for phase four, the residents in these buildings will be relocated and then offered a comparable unit, albeit smaller, in the newer development. Regent Park was built in 1949 and it became Canada's first public housing project. And this is Oak Street. I've mentioned it before, but there's a fantastic video you can find on YouTube called Farewell to Oak Street that shows what this neighborhood was like back in the 50s. It's quite a fascinating look. Just south of here is Dundas Street. But let's start making our way east. Ratna Lane. I've never been through here. Seems rather uninviting to pedestrians. There's bike pumps here. There's a lot of outdoor ping pong tables in the city, but you really have to find a very calm day, I would think, in order to be able to enjoy them. Where these buildings are, 
used to be buildings like those low-rise brown apartment buildings. Now they're classified as mixed income developments. There's an aquatic center just over there at Regent Park itself. That was one of the first developments to open up. And I think phase one was completed back in 2009. And there's a similar redevelopment happening over on the west end in downtown in the Alexandra Park neighborhood. Liberty Pizzeria. the wide open space. I don't think this is the best utilization of what's probably not going to be a very well utilized sidewalk area. It's just a sea of gray sidewalk to walk on. planted a row of trees or made a mini parquet there. There's the Pam McConnell Aquatic Center. And there's a statue of Pam McConnell. This neighborhood also features a Wendy's. That is a chain that has been making a bit of a comeback in the city as of late. Next major street coming up is Parliament Street. And I think there's another laneway. Well, I have two choices. There's one just south and just north of Parliament. Maybe I'll take the one just north. And we'll walk west on that for a bit. Easiest way to get to Dundas Grove just to be keep walking west on Dundas here. It's ten dollar extra, you know what I mean? 
but I seem to recall, I think in January, I did a walk in the opposite direction along Dundas, so we'll mix it up a little bit. The east side of downtown is always a little bit quieter. It has a different vibe to it than the west side of downtown. I was reading on Reddit, there was a thread, or there was a thread where people were even questioning what is downtown. And some were saying if you drop someone down here on this end, they really wouldn't feel like they were downtown. This is Parliament Street. Let's get off the beaten path a little bit. I'll cross the street here, make a right, and then make a left. This area certainly looks a little rough around the edges. The main retail stretch through Cabbage Town is several blocks north of here. Toronto is a city of laneways. There's this movie trope that laneways in New York City are quite dangerous. You'll see that in movies, but in actuality, I think there's only a couple of actual laneways in Manhattan. And they tend to use one in particular over and over again in movies and TV. even downtown amongst the skyscrapers and tall buildings. Well, this is downtown, but where everything is built up more, you'll still find laneways. And I think this area is technically still part of Cabbage Town. This would be the very southern end of Cabbage Town. I don't know why I said it that way. No parking in this lane, I would imagine. That would be necessary so emergency vehicles can still pass through. I was about to say, I haven't spotted any laneway houses, but I think this one, 392 there, might just have someone living in it. It was a very complicated process to get a laneway house built.
no loitering. Police enforced. I have my doubts that the police are responding to a no loitering call. You'll hear stories of people calling in saying their car is being stolen and they know exactly where it is because there's a tracker and the police don't really respond. And these homes would date back to the late 1800s. I think we can still keep going here. We have stumbled into a interesting part of town. There's police on bikes patrolling. That's a drop-in center across the street. smell is not very good through here. On the right, this cage was put up to prevent people from loitering in this area. And the building had to obtain a special bylaw exemption in order to be able to erect it. Found out where that fire truck was heading. There's a police car and ambulance up there as well. And we are back to Dundas Street. Just for a few more blocks maybe. And this neighborhood is known as the Garden District. I think that it is bordered by Young to the west, Carlton to the north, Sherburne to the east, and Queen Street to the south. This is Pembroke Street. A fellow Toronto YouTuber lives just in the north up here. Well, there's plans for a 49 story tower that houses. There's Fillmore's. And that site is to be redeveloped into a high rise. Toronto's Ultimate Gentlemen's Club. Number one for stags and bottle service. There's only a few other clubs like that I can even think of in the city. And I highly have my doubts that that would be the number one spot.
And this is George Street. the new location of King Place. They used to be located over at Dundas and Sherbrooke. And there is Dundas Square off in the distance, but I'm going to take a bit of a long cut to get there. Maybe I'll go left. Uh, Mutual Street up ahead, and we'll take that down to Shooter, and I'll head over to Young, then up to Dundas Square. What was it even about? Alright, let's head south here down to Shooter. Alright, things take on a very different vibe. IJC Med Spa. Must be a lot of people in this city getting Botox and filler and that sort of thing. You see a lot of those places. And right here are the Arena Gardens from 1912 to 1989. This was the site of a hockey arena. Butcher Boutique. Here's an example of a heritage building being incorporated into a new condo. Looks a little bit better than your typical facade preservation as we get to Shooter Street. And I quite like the balconies on this condo. heading west along the north side of Shooter. The old home of the Cooper and Gillespie houses, dating back to 1850.
there's a police car kind of blocking the lane there. We're seeing traffic to turn off. That's at Church Street. Oh, there's fire trucks. has piqued my curiosity. Is probably a case of nothing to see. That was last time not getting in the way of anything. Not really see any harm done. It must have been a pretty gnarly accident. Looks like this SUV and a food delivery person had collided. Hopefully, there's nothing serious injury-wise. I imagine the driver of the vehicle would be out. I didn't see it happen. It's not fair to even speculate what might have happened there. Other than there was obviously a collision. There's a fire truck. East on Shooter Street, and that is Queen Street West there. So I walk around the Metropolitan United Church. I'm going to make my way back up to Shooter. Here is St. Mike's Hospital, where I imagine that e-bike driver might be.
amazing looking at all the developments that have gone up around Dundas and Jarvis. for Bond Street, back to Shooter. They're building a pretty good size addition to the hospital there. Street and on the left is Massey Hall. They closed down with some very fortunate timing that coincided with the pandemic and I think it was a 500 million dollar renovation and it reopened with a concert by Gordon Lightfoot who is sadly no longer with us. Not too long ago, Andrew Schultz, a famous comedian, had a show planned there and ticket sales were underway. And the owners of the venue got wind of what kind of material he did and said no way. And he ended up down at Meridian Hall, which I think has a bigger capacity. So it ultimately worked out for him, but I think it's a poor look on the owners of the venue. I mean, so I don't care. To book an axe, then cancel it after the fact. And we have made it to Young Street where there are more flashing lights up ahead. former home of Nordstrom at the Eaton Center. There's another fire truck. Stretcher heading in. Yeah, it looks to be down into the subway station.
There doesn't seem to be any particular rush, but we've made it to, as it's officially called, and shall forever officially be called, Young Dundas Square. A little dig on the city's idiotic plans to rename it. elevator. I might steer clear of going down into the subway. Oh, no, there's someone in there, it looks like. Either way, I think I'm going to wrap this up here. Maybe figure out some lunch. So I hope you enjoyed this. Walk that started all the way at East Chinatown. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If you wish to support what I do on YouTube, there's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership down in the description. I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides, which I have not updated in quite a while. And there is a super thanks button appearing down below if you wish to say thanks that way. Anywho, you know the drill. Stay warm, stay safe, and I will catch you in the next one. Yoink.